Planets of the Old Republic, or KOTOR, is an RPG developed by BioWare and released on Xbox and Windows in 2003, OS X in 2013, and lastly made available on Steam in 2009. KOTOR takes place 4,000 years before any of the events you see in the cinematic universe, or 3,956 BBY. BBY is the acronym for Before the Battle of Yavin. This would be a good spot to mention that recent Disney purge of the Star Wars Expanded Universe to Star Wars Legends, there are many continuity gray areas that we won't really know for KOTOR. However, I'll speak of this review in such a way that it shouldn't make a difference if the game is canon or not. You start the game first by setting up your character with the various class, attributes, skills, and feats you think will be most helpful. Or you can skip this whole section by taking the default or quick character setup. And if you're watching this review, chances are you want the quick setup. TLDR. Tildr. You no one got time for that. After setting up your character, you are quickly introduced to the core mechanics of the game in a mandatory tutorial section. The gameplay is deceptively simple at first glance. You can move, throw grenades. When in combat mode, you can choose between different types of attacks, if you have the feats to use different attacks, or you can use the force, if your character has the force. The reason the gameplay is deceptive is because the combat system is calculated based on Dungeons & Dragons rules involving rolls. No, not cinnamon rolls. The good news is that you don't need to understand these systems to play the game, but if you like picking apart your game, micromanaging, and optimization, KOTOR will empower your OCD ways. Like a good RPG, you gain experience from kills, completing quests, objectives, and sometimes doing seemingly random things. While playing, you will be given various ethical choices which will yield either light side, dark side, or no alignment points. For example, someone comes up to you and says, Help! My children and I are starving because my deadbeat husband got himself eaten by a Ronto! You can A. Eat her children B. Offer to help her C. Help her only later to steal her credits and then eat her children or D. Ask for a reward for helping her. You will obviously get a dark side point for children eating and a light side point for helping her. You'll get another light side point if you reject the payment, too. Then you can go on your way, skipping on dead children corpses, or walking on rainbows and happy snow white kittens. Whichever your alignment you may have. There's a number of mini games you can play in KOTOR. You can race in swoop races, you can play Pazak, and sometimes you'll need to be a gunner on the Ebon Hawk while traveling from planet to planet. I would get into more detail on these minigames, but this is supposed to be a quick review. Wait until I do a long review for this game someday. Speaking of traveling to other planets, you get to visit some familiar planets to the Star Wars lore. Tatooine, Dantooine, and Kashyyyk being classics. Manan and Korriban being less well-known, but equally memorable planets. At this point, I haven't even touched on the best quality of KOTOR the characters and dynamic story. Let's go back to that baby-eating character you created with negative 30 charisma. After royally screwing that poor widow out of her credits and then proceeding to eat her children, what if she put a bounty on your head and then once the bounty hunters tracked you down, they say, do you remember when I said I would kill you last? <laughs> I lied. After which you and the bounty hunters engage in a battle so glorious that it goes down in the Star Wars universe as the greatest showdown ever. Well, that definitely doesn't happen in KOTOR, but my point is, is that your actions have consequences in the game, sometimes short, sometimes long-lasting consequences. In your journey, you will have opportunities to get help from characters willing to assist you. Beware walking the road paved with dead children, because you might end up missing some characters, because your sword accidentally leapt into the chest cavity of one of the potential party practitioners provided the predicament of procurement and the poltergeist of passionate persuasion past the Sorry. My point, okay, last one, is each character has his or her own backstory, and sometimes chimes in when the protagonist is talking to other NPCs. In conclusion, the story is fantastic, the gameplay is as simple or complicated as you want, there's a high amount of replay value, I highly suggest checking KOTOR out. P.S. Atratsu and his review channel does not support the killing of children, unless it's that annoying girl in Skyrim who always says she's not scared of me. She needs to be Fus Rodad. Hey, thanks for watching this new set of reviews. I really wanted to have some content that's easier to make that I could upload to my YouTube channel. So my fast reviews are going to be reviews that require less planning on my part.
but still will have my own unique style of reviewing. I originally just wanted to give facts about the game in a fast pace, but my quirky humor leapt into the script and I thought, fine, this is my review, I'll do it the way I want it. If you'd like to see one of my more in-depth reviews, I suggest checking out my Beyond Good and Evil review. Thanks for watching.